What's going on, everybody? Josh Engelman for Osimo.com. Ben Raz and I are back with our PGA best bets, our contenders, and I would be remiss <laughs> to not start off by saying I nailed Kevin Na as the winner last week. So if you guys were watching this, I hope you got your bet in on Kevin Na because we printed some cash last week. Yeah, I have to give you, uh, you know, I was excited. Leishman back from the dead comes top five. I'm feeling good about that. And you just, you stole my thunder. Great way to start it, Kevin. Now, that's a big outright, too. It wasn't like he was a favorite. Certainly, yeah. that's what we want to be doing here. Yeah, that's what, that's what we're hitting. We've got Tyler on the back end. He's going to be tracking some of these, but I feel like I'm starting pretty well. I'll be in the green for a bit. I could, I could take a few whiffs now moving forward. <laughs> so You have the honor now because you're, you're the people's champ. Where are you getting things started this week? All right, we are kicking off the American Express, and I'm starting at the top with someone that is likely to win. We don't have to get too crazy right out of the gate. I'm starting with Tony Finau, 21 to 1 to win outright. It was T14 last year, and based on the research that I've been doing, distance off the tee is going to be the most important piece of someone's game. Your approach game, probably a close second, but not super duper close. Finau, 13th in driving distance last year, 21st in strokes gained around the green last year. I'm loving all of it. And we, look, when push comes to shove, it's Tony Finau. We know he's one of the best, what, 20 golfers in the world. So it's not ever surprising if he wins any tournament. And I think today... I want to get a bet in on Tony Finau to win. And you know what? I'm, I, I can pick winners, man. I'm one for one so far in 2021. If you, if you can break the Tony Finau curse, that would be more impressive than Kevin Na because Tony okay. Finau is a world-class golfer with only one career win and at Puerto Rico. Uh, <laughs> so that is really, he's been so close so many times. I do think it's a matter of time and that's overblown. Yeah. Uh, and if he does win, I think most people feel like it's going to be in a major or something. It should be an event like this, a weaker field where you can lean on the driving. And I, my kind of my first guy is similar, not in terms of not being able to win on tour, but just really can go well, really aggressive. It's Matthew Wolf, same range, 22 to 1. We haven't seen him. He wasn't in Hawaii, so we don't know exactly where the form is at, but we know that when he gets going, uh, obviously he can win in a hurry. He can rack up birdies, winner of the 3M, several runner-ups, including a major. I don't really need to spell it out. When Matthew Wolf is on, he's as dangerous as they come. Uh, I'm going to start my card with him this week. I like both of those plays. Uh, you know, two guys at the top, two guys in similar odds range, two guys that can certainly get hot. Now, uh, we're going to transition to someone who doesn't totally get all that hot, but we're going to get wild anyway. I'm going T10, 40 to 1, Joseph Ooh. Bramlett. Whew, we're dipping our toe into the water. Okay, so he's 24th in driving distance so far this season. I know that's a relatively small sample size, but I will hitch my wagon to anything that I can find. Missed the cut here last year, but he lost more than five strokes off the tee. That was his worst performance on tour off the tee that he's had. And I don't, like, that's a bit of an outlier as far as I'm concerned. Everything else was playing pretty well. He just apparently couldn't hit a ball off the tee. He's a bad putter. That is the actual problem with Joseph Bramlett. That's not as big of an issue here. I mean, you don't ever want anybody to be bad at anything, but putting is not as important based on the previous results that I've looked at. So I'm willing to take a bad putter that's been stroking the ball pretty well off the tee. And when push comes to shove, it's just a T10 and I'm still getting 40 to 1. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I didn't think that Joseph Bramlett was going to make the contenders video. Uh, his form has been atrocious. Now, yes. when you're talking... 40 to one on a top 10. He just needs to hang around and make the weekend and try to stay in the mix. I'm going a different direction. I'm sticking in the outright market because I do think it's kind of wide open without Rom. I'm going to Russell Henley, 35 to one. Uh, pretty easy sell. He is absolutely dominant with his irons and he has been for a while. It's just it's a clinic right now. Running the long term stats, he's actually first in the field in strokes gained approach. And this is a guy that can get hot on Bermuda. You look what he did at Sony. He gained across the board, came in 11th. He's primed. He's been playing good for a while now. And if you're going to give me 35 to 1, I'll gladly, gladly take that. I'm about to get even worse than Joseph Bramlett, I think. Let's just do this. I, you know, it's like ripping a Band-Aid off. Sometimes I don't want to tell you guys this, but that's when I bring the goods. This is uh, Kevin Nott territory. Moment. Yes, yeah, so I'm looking at Wyndham Clark. He is 126 to 1 to win outright. So we're really getting egregious. 6 to 1 for a top 20, and I think that's pretty solid value right now. 32nd, we're, we're, we're getting a theme for my guys. 32nd in driving distance last year. Missed the cut here 
last year, but he was tied for 18th in 2019. That's a good sign for me. Uh, you know, it's better than missing the cut again. Uh, he hasn't played since the RSM in November. Finished top 20 or T23 T- there. I don't have a ton to add for Wyndham Clark right now. I just think the odds are a little too long for his statistical profile. As a general baseline, I think he ranks higher than where his odds are. So I'm just trying to squeeze out a little bit of value. It's not a particularly strong Wyndham Clark take. It's mostly just that I think the line is slightly off. I can get behind Wyndham Clark. He's a guy that can get, he has a rare combination of good driving and good putting. You don't see that often. And when it clicks, it's the Bryson model. I'm not saying he's Bryson, but that's how Bryson. I'll take it. Yeah, there you yes. go. Wyndham Clark Wind- is Bryson. Perfect. Nailed that's it. That's what this video is about. Yeah. I'm going to a guy that, you know, again, not as aggressive. He's 85 to one in the outright, seven to one for a top 10. So reasonable. Yeah. And it's Doc Redman. He's one of the young guns. We've seen him obviously not break through on tour, but he's got a runner-up at Rocket Mortgage, a pair of top threes in recent months, and a fourth at Bermuda in November of 2020. So he's been hovering around. He's going to gain off the tee. You've mentioned you think driving distance is really important. He's a birdie maker. This is the type of profile in theory that you want at a course like this. I know the celebrities aren't going to be there, but it's still going to be very easy. These are par 72s. He can lean on the par five scoring. Uh, I don't think it's crazy. It may be a stretch to say he wins, but a top 10 is he's been doing it. uh, And I don't see why that can't continue at seven to one. I will take that and try to slowly inch my way back up uh, to get catch you with the Kevin Na lead that you've taken. Look, Leishman looked good last week. We can't be he too bad. I, I, think, I think you and I both were, walked out of last week as a, a full success, and I'm hoping that we can carry that on to this weekend and the American Express. Do you have any idea where we are next week? No. We're okay, somewhere fine. in California. That would be my strong take, and that'll probably be wrong, too. Yeah, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. We will be back next week no matter what. It doesn't matter what tournament is being played you and i will be here making these picks that's that's what we're here to do and i'm going to strike another outright winner that's just going to happen i'm going to go two for two and retire as the greatest pga betting tout in the history of the world if joseph bramlett wins this tournament this will be my last appearance not even on this show just in in general i I don't know if i could handle that you would you would be immortalized but uh yeah let's keep it going and obviously this is a wide open tournament with rom withdrawing i think it's a really good betting week If Joseph Bramlett wins this tournament outright, you'll be subscribing to these videos at joshengelman.com. But for now, go to osmo.com slash join to sign up for all of our content. Go to oddshopper, osmo.com slash oddshopper. Does that work? That works, right? You'll get there. Click on the link at the top. Go scope out all the odds that we are looking at. You can track all of your bets. It's perfect for everybody. Good luck this weekend. We will be back again next weekend with these picks. Come make some money with us. We're out.